Alright guys, welcome back to the channel if you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, I'm a bit too late to the party, however this clip just surfaced a few days ago here in my feed. It is on Jordan Peterson's channel, the title is Why the Son of Hamas Walked Away. And on the thumbnail you can see Leaving Islam. I don't know much about Mossab Hassan Youssef, as far as I know, the guy left Islam, left Hamas allegedly and then became a Christian according to some sources. Be that as it may, we're going to find out today, I'm sure. But before we jump into the video, as always, guys, if you enjoy my content, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and check out the links in the description box below to further support my work. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. Let's go back to when you were 13. I want to pick up the thread of that story. Okay, so you're you're seeing all this catastrophe, this chaos that you describe that redounds to the benefit of the con men who are running the show, for example, and that is there to delegitimize um, Israel and, and the United States and to redound to the credit, let's say, of the Iranians operating in the background. You're seeing all the consequences of this firsthand. You decide that for a variety of complicated reasons, you decide that you're going to face your fear of death. You have this graveyard next. You're going there to investigate and to experiment. What was the consequence of doing that for you? And then how does that tie in with your transformation of worldview over time? When I was very young, and this is stuff I don't like to talk about because I choose not to be a victim. And yeah. So I don't like uh, to uh, to become vulnerable because people think that you are weak. Mm -hmm. uh, stuff that I don't have to talk about, but I think it's there is no way around it. Um, because many people ask, you know, what motivates you and uh, where are you coming from? Um, when I was very, very young, I was raped. In a culture, in a culture, that would kill the rapist, but also they would kill the rape victim. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I never told uh, anybody about that story. I never got any support. And how old were you? I was uh, five or six years old when that happened. Now I had to heal on my own and it was a hell of a journey in a society that did not have mercy, mm -hmm. that they preferred that I would disappear mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I don't bring shame on them. Right. And I witnessed so many women being killed after being raped, mm -hmm. that the father would prefer to kill his daughter to bury the shame with her, not to have to face the society that his daughter was raped. Mm -hmm. What type of mentality is this? What type of religion is this? And this is not just a culture. Okay, so first and foremost, we have to take his words at face value. Of course, I haven't been there. I cannot confirm if he is telling the truth or not. First and foremost, he starts with saying that he never talked about this. He doesn't have to talk about it, but then he proceeds to actually talk about it. Therefore, yet again, let's say it is all true. He himself mentioned throughout his little monologue here that this was the culture. But then in the end, he says, this is the religion. What kind of religion is this? What kind of culture is this? It's not only the culture, it is the religion. However, where is his proof for that? There is not one single source within Islam that confirms what he just said. If a rapist rapes someone under certain interpretation of the Sharia, he should then be executed. And I believe this is a fair judgment, of course, because if someone goes out into society and people, they should get the full force of the law, of course, and therefore within Sharia this would be execution. However, you guessed it, there is of course not one single passage that the victim should be executed. And therefore, yet again, we're just going to take his word for it. Let's say all of this is true, which I doubt already, but let's say it is. Well, then it's people doing certain things, but it has nothing to do with with the religion. Yet again, the challenge is present one shred of evidence that this is Islamic law, that this is part of the religion. Okay. Does it's, it reflect on his inability to protect her? Is that the source of the no, shame? It's his status. It is status. Yeah. It's his, the father of, uh, he could not protect his daughter. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, now uh, maybe the daughter is pregnant. Mm -hmm. This was before abortion, etc. Okay. The, 
the daughter is pregnant, what is he going to do with the child? No, he prefers to kill the daughter. He does not There's want to go to, do even, with the religion. Uh, to the to the degree that his grandchild is a result of a of a rape right. incident. And yet again, this has absolutely nothing to do with the religion. If you look into Sharia law, just peripherally, you don't even have to look deep you will understand that it is not about taking the law into your own hands and going out and executing people, executing your own daughter. Of course not. If there was a crime committed by your daughter or by somebody else, then the Islamic State will take care of it. And therefore, in this instance, obviously, the daughter is completely innocent and nowhere in Islam, nowhere in Islamic law is anybody asking of you to your own daughter. This man is simply fabricating lies. And uh, from the seventh century, uh, in Islam uh, or in in Arabia, they killed the infants. So when I say sacrificing children, this is not uh, coincidental. It's uh, it's rooted in that culture. Yeah, the guy just keeps on lying, and he's intertwining culture and religion again. Matter of fact, yes, one thing is true. Prior to Islam, in the Arabian Peninsula, the pagans used to bury their firstborn daughters. Yes, they killed their own children, that is true. However, Islam came to abolish all of this. In the Quran we find, Surah al takwir And when the girl who was buried alive is asked for what sin she was killed, so this is clearly a passage in the Quran that speaks about the girls, the daughters that got unjustly buried alive, unjustly killed by their families. The question is, what sin have they committed? It confirms that those children were, of course, innocent and that it is unjust to do so. Islam came to abolish it. There is even another surah, Surah Al-Isra, do not kill your children for fear of poverty. We provide for them and for you. Surely killing them is a heinous sin. And this is why I say that this guy intertwines culture and religion, because you can clearly see how Islam came to abolish this horrible practice that was practiced by the pagans. Now, is it impossible that there are certain people that still practice it? Sure, it could be, if we believe what he says. However, Islam stands exactly against this, and I gave you evidence and proof from the Quran. So for me, it was unjust that I had to actually carry the burden instead of getting the support from the family, from the society, like at least to come and say, who did it? Mm -hmm. Today I'm 45 years old, I'm a very strong man. I can confront the whole universe if necessary. And up to I now, none of them asked the question, who did it? And by the way, I had the power to uh, kill the predator down the road. He's probably living in a nightmare. Why I didn't actually harm him? Because later on, I got lots of power, even when I was back in the territory. But I chose not to. Instead of going after the rapist, I went after the belief system. Uh -huh. And this is where I need to create the change. Mm -hmm. I see. So you, the what's so-called the uh, Islam? And I know this is a very sensitive uh, topic. If the belief system, if Allah thinks that the rapist and the raped are equal and they deserve the same punishment, then this God does not have authority over my life. And this is where I start questioning the entire belief system and I uh -huh. rebel. Yeah, this statement is absolutely false. As I said already in the beginning, there is not one single source that will confirm what he just said, that the rapist and the rapist victim are equal. This is, of course, absolutely ludicrous. I'm going to go into the Quran again because the guy certainly is not. He's just fabricating things as he goes. Surah and Nisa, the translation is the women. O oh, you who have believed, be persistently standing firm in justice. Witness for Allah, even if it be against yourselves or parents and relatives, whether one is rich or poor. Allah is more worthy of both. So do not follow personal inclination, lest you not be just. And if you distort your testimony or refuse to give it, then indeed Allah is ever with what you do, acquainted. 
One of my favorite surahs is Surah Al Imran. You are the best nation produced as an example for mankind. You enjoin what is right and forbid what is wrong and believe in Allah. Anyway, simply open up the Quran yourself and you will confirm what I say. The Quran is always calling to justice. What this man proposes here is absolutely fabricated, nothing but lies. How, how come you're still alive? Well, they tried to kill me and they're still trying to kill me. They have been trying to assassinate me politically, at least. All these progressives and Muslim Brotherhood uh, Muslim. Uh, wearing all type of masks in the United States. They have been trying to discredit me so I cannot even speak for myself, to defend myself. Because I'm speaking on behalf of all the wounded children in the region. And I know their game. And I know they don't care for the children. Instead, my father sacrificed me. He said, this is not my son, and I don't know him if you want to kill him. His blood is allowed. Again, so when what you does have this to choose have between to a hypothetical God that does not even exist and the future of children or your own child, well, we have a fundamental problem here. Okay, there are only so many options. Either the guy is completely mentally ill, stupid, or an agent. Between those three options, I tend for the third one. But nevertheless, again, this guy talks about his father, allegedly, and how he abandoned him, allegedly, and he's not talking about Islam. He didn't provide any proof whatsoever to show, hey, listen, guys, this is what the Quran states, this is what the Hadith states, when you get raped as a child, you should be abandoned, you should be killed. Of course not, there is no such thing at all within Islamic theology, and therefore he cannot provide any proof. Moreover, in the end, he says, hypothetical God that doesn't even exist. Well, I didn't know that he is an atheist. I thought he became a Christian. Then you come posing to tell, to tell the rest of the universe that Islam is a religion of peace. Well, no, we have a big problem here. We have to talk about it. And when I start talking about this, I got canceled. <laughs> I always find it hilarious when people say, I got canceled, and then they have interviews with Jordan Peterson. You cannot get any more mainstream than this, of course. You have a huge platform talking to people such as Jordan Peterson, and obviously there is a political interest for you to speak out. He claims that he got canceled once he spoke out about Islam, but matter of fact, yet again, I know I'm repeating myself, but you didn't speak about Islam whatsoever. You spoke about cultural problems within your family, etc., within your country, allegedly, and this is all you said. Up until now, you didn't prove anything. Yeah, Let's yeah, proceed. You got canceled. So, I, I, yeah, and yeah. now I'm labeled Islamophobe. Mm -hmm. What Islamophobe? I'm confronting this thing and I'm willing to die in its pursuit because we th there is no other way. Only the truth can set people free. Only the truth. The same thing with Palestine. Okay. I personally very much dislike the term Islamophobe. For me, that sounds very SJW, ultimately. I simply call them enemies of Islam. And this is basically what he is, of course. A person that slanders Islam without providing evidence is, of course, an enemy of Islam. If he would honestly, sincerely seek the evidence, he would seek the truth, then, of course, he would find it. Because if his story is true for the thousandth time, and he would actually look into the Quran and the Hadith, he would simply confirm that the Quran and the Hadith are against such oppression that has been committed by a racist, and therefore he would stay Muslim. But this is, of course, only if he is legit. The same thing with Palestine. It totally depends on the destruction of Israel in order for us to see what Palestine is. And the manifestation of Palestine requires the destruction of Israel. Same thing with the Islamic State. It requires okay, the destruction. Okay, so first and foremost, it doesn't require the utter destruction of Israel, not at all. There is the two-state solution as well. And matter of fact, I'm really wondering what he's talking about. If he is truly a Palestinian, he would surely know that his country got occupied by European settlers and then got decimated and genocided ultimately. So now what does he want? For Israel to continue existing under the same totalitarian government? Is this great while well, your people are being oppressed? This is why I said I tend towards the third option of him being an agent. Destruction of civilization. All civilizations combined. What? In order to achieve this global state called uh, Khilafah. But we don't know how it is going to look like. 
What are you talking about? So first and foremost, this is a total false equivalent here. He's building a straw man where he says, well, to free Palestine, to essentially stop the genocide in Palestine, to stop the genocide of children. I thought you really care about children. You have to utterly destroy Israel. And then you have to utterly destroy global civilization. And then you have to build a Khilafa. All of this is needed in order to stop the genocide in Gaza. Yeah, absolutely. This is so insanely ridiculous. But anyways, if you look into the Khilafah, into the Caliphate, what does it truly mean? It is simply an Islamic state under Islamic governance, a theocracy. And we had many Khilafahs throughout the centuries. We had the Rashidun Caliphate, the Umayyad Caliphate, Abbasid Caliphate, Fatimid Caliphate, and then ultimately the last Caliphate, depends on who you ask, of course, would be the Ottoman Caliphate. Or how we learned about it in the West, simply the Ottoman Empire. This was the time of empires. And therefore, yes, you had the Ottoman Empire. You had the Roman Empire, which was a pagan empire ultimately. But then later you had the so-called Holy Roman Empire, which was a theocracy as well. It was a Catholic Empire. You had the Mongol Empire, the Aztec Empire. And of course, you had the British Empire as well. It is simply a form of governance, an Islamic union, if you will. Any Muslim would be able to travel to the caliphate and live there. Very similar to the European nation, for example, where an Italian can live in Germany without a visa. It is simply a theocracy, a state that is run by Sharia. This has nothing to do with a global takeover. Of course, they love to project here because this is ultimately what America is doing. They're creating a one world government. Anyways, even if it were all true, what he just said about the caliphate, which it is not, what then does this have to do with the freeing of Palestine? with the ending of the genocide in Gaza. Please tell us, please enlighten us. We have first to die. For them to live, then they can prove themselves. What? It's, if there is anything- uh, What is he talking about? That defines madness. This is madness. But so you were hurt very badly when you were very young and then you <laughs> lived through the Antifada, Antifada and you were right beside the graveyard and you decided that you're going to confront death relatively directly and overcome your fear of it. You were doing some religious experimentation really at the same time then. You said that you were testing out this hypothesis that there was torture in the grave. You did that alone because your friends wouldn't come along with you, which is like hardly surprising. So you, you said that you also decided with regards to being raped that you're the proper response to that wasn't to go after the person specifically who was responsible, but to go after something deeper than that, which was the belief system that, gave, gave, that gave rise to this problem. All right, so now which you're, problem? you're 13. Define it. Are these ideas Show already evidence. in your Anything. imagination? Like wh no. when, when do you start sorting, when, do, when was it that you started sorting this out? Um, some of them were in the form of feelings, just a gut feeling. Uh, I did not have the mean to express them, but I knew them. Uh, it was not coincidental that I could not tell All my about own feelings. father about the situation. But later on, I knew that my punishment is death. Okay, uh, there is the lie. Because on the one hand, he's telling you that his father somehow abandoned him and he was wishing death upon him. But then he tells you that he never told his father. This is the lie. So... Today, I have the power to express myself. I didn't know everything at that time, but believe it or not, I felt it. That this is, uh, this society cannot be trusted. And this is why today when I a stand war -torn in the country, world, anyone who identifies as a Muslim, I consider them as a threat. I don't trust Muslim. them. And people say, oh, you cannot generalize. This is like insane. What you say, no, it's not insane. Because if their belief system has sentenced me to death many times for crimes that I haven't committed. Which crimes? Then you pause as a Muslim. You carry that identity. How am I supposed to feel towards you? Okay, all the Muslims in the comment section, please write down, aside from this guy here, completely ignore his personal case. 
and simply write in the comment section what you as a Muslim, do you as a Muslim believe that a rape victim deserves to die? Please tell us in the comment section so we can clear up this confusion. It's like coming to a Jewish uh, refugee during the Nazi era and say, I am a Nazi, come with me, I'm not gonna hurt you. No, you're taking the identity of a Nazi regime. And whether you are the bad cop or the good okay, cop, he's it definitely doesn't an matter. Agent. You are so it's blatantly obvious who this guy is working for, of course. If you want to draw any parallel for a Nazi regime, it of course would be Israel and what they are doing to the Palestinians. And nowadays, thank God, this is really mainstream knowledge. You don't need to be a political scientist for this. But anyways, because the guy is not bothering and providing any evidence, I certainly will. In the farewell sermon of the prophet, may peace be upon him, we have the famous quote of him saying, O people, your Lord is one, and your father is one. You are all from Adam, and Adam was created from dust. There is no superiority for an Arab over a non-Arab, nor for a non-Arab over an Arab, and no superiority for a white person over a black person, nor for a black person over a white person, except through piety and good action. So it's funny how he calls Islam Nazism, even though Islam is an all-encompassing religion, is not ethnocentric whatsoever. However, the opposite side, Israel, is of course extremely ethnocentric, because Israel is an ethno-state. Ultimately, the West goes completely against ethno-states, against nationalism. It is so, so bad. It is Nazism indeed. That's what they claim. But Israel can do it. Matter of fact, Israel is America's greatest ally and they should keep their borders closed. They need an iron dome where they can be by themselves and no refugees are welcome there. But no, surely Islam is total Nazism. No, you're taking the identity of a Nazi regime. And whether you are the bad cop or the good cop, it doesn't matter. You are serving the same establishment. And I'm tired of this moderate what? versus extremist. Every individual has the responsibility to know what they are identifying with. You know, my individuality is above all religions and above all gods. I don't accept to just take a label for myself, not knowing what I'm getting myself involved into, because only my parents pushed that religious identity on me. Okay, so first and foremost, my parents did not push this religious identity on me. Quite the opposite. My parents were Orthodox Christians. I, however, read the whole Bible. I spoke to priests, bishops, monks, archbishops even, in order to truly understand what Christianity is teaching. Not Christians, but Christianity in itself. And then I further went on and studied Islam. Ultimately, alhamdulillah, I accepted Islam by myself, using logic, using reason. He, however, is not doing that whatsoever. He stated himself, what a little devil he is, that he is above all the religions, above God even. He is making himself God and therefore follows his own desires. And we, of course, find warnings of that within the Quran as well. Surah Al-Furqan, have you seen the one who takes his own desires as his God? Then would you be responsible for him? But even if we don't look into Islam and we don't look into religion, we just look at his own worldview, what does it really mean? He's simply a moral relativist. He believes that subjectively his morals determine what is right and wrong. He already mentioned his feelings, his gut feeling. But what does that matter? The truth is the truth, no matter what you think, no matter what you feel. You feel a certain way, but this is just... Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. And therefore, genuinely, what kind of value is he providing? Of course, none. He provides no value. He provides no evidence. It is extremely low IQ, and this is what kind of makes me question if he really is an agent, because the guy doesn't provide any evidence. On the other hand, maybe this is enough for the mainstream normies. They simply believe what he has to say. And if I am at that level of consciousness, then how can I trust you with anything? I cannot trust you with my woman. I cannot trust you with my property. I cannot trust you with my money. I cannot trust you being even close to me. Because you don't qualify, you don't know your indi individuality. 
You are unpredictable. You can be friendly now, but five minutes later, you can be a part of a crowd and you are going to show me your tasks. You might bite me. So then I have a problem. Okay, okay what do you this have, is what absolutely do you make insane. All right, guys, I'm going to cut it off here because the guy is just rambling incoherently. Ultimately, he says that he cannot trust a Muslim with his wife. I don't really understand why you want to give your wife to a Muslim in the first place, but be that as it may, within the Sharia, you should surely know, of course, that adultery, fornication is absolutely haram. And therefore, I would rather trust a Muslim around my women folk than any disbeliever, any liberal or any individualist, of course. But matter of fact, Islamically speaking, you of course shouldn't leave your women alone with other men. So yet again, Islamically speaking, you shouldn't even do that. Why would you? You would only come to such conclusions if you have no idea about Islam or if you have to push a certain agenda against Islam, which, again, at this point, I'm really not too sure because the guy doesn't seem like the brightest light bulb or like the sharpest tool in the shed, as they say. Anyways, guys, I'm going to cut it off here because it's absolutely useless. You see what kind of imposter this man is. If you enjoyed the content, however, if you enjoyed my reaction, leave me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and check out the links in the description box below to further support my work. Thank you very much for that, fellow Muslims. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace. <laughs> Oh